In today's video, we're taking a look at an all new video transmitter from Eashi. Now this is called the Eashi TXC23. Now this thing comes in 20 by 20 format and also comes with an adapter to change it into a 30 by 30. And they also provide you with right angle MMCX, which is really great SMA or RPSMA, depending on what you purchase. And whatever you purchase, they also give you a right angle MMCX to a pigtail, which is really great. And as you can tell here, we have five rubber gummies and a bunch of wires, which we'll get into how to set those up in a bit here. Now, if you're gonna be running a 20 by 20 configuration, I do highly recommend you add the rubber gummies because these are M4 holes right now. So that means they're four millimeter holes, so it will be loose on an M3 screw, and that's why they provide those rubber gummies. Now, if we take a look at the adapter here, it'll allow you to also still run your 20 by 20 and also possibly convert to a 30 by 30 if you put this on the bottom. So that's also a really nice addition. You can do quite a lot with this or just use it as a 30 by 30 mount. So the way to convert this into a 30 by 30, you're gonna wanna align these. And before you start soldering them on, what you wanna do is just solder one side, make sure it's perfect because it'll be a lot easier for you to make adjustments when just one has solder on there. So it makes the overall process much easier for you. Now, once you solder these directly, you can also solder the wires to them if you're running the 30 by 30 configuration. Now let's move this off to the side and take a look at the board itself here. Now, as you can tell, it seems like a very proper board. The quality looks absolutely superb on this. I wonder who's doing it for Eashin here. And if we take a closer look down here, we see we have a ton of LEDs. And what's really nice about this is, I can't believe they're actually able to fit all this, is that each row will give you the status of, for example, the channel, one for the band, and one for the power. The bottom one most is gonna give you for the power. And the power is pretty crazy. It has pit mode and it's selectable all the way up to 800 milliwatts. Now also the DC input voltage is six to 36, which means it'll run between 2S all the way up to 6S, even probably a little bit more than that if you wanted to. So it's a maximum of 36 volts and we also have six bands 48 channels and again mmcx port for the antenna type here so it's really nice to see what the hell they've done here and again this thing is selling for 11 dollars as of me making this video and uh, that's pretty crazy because originally it's $21. So if you wanted to connect this in your quadcopter, where we really have to pay attention to is these bottom pads here. These upper ones don't really make sense because one of them is called pin, the other one is ground. Ground obviously makes sense. And audio. So audio, it's not an audio output. I think it's an audio input here. So keep that in mind. This does not have a microphone on board. So yeah, if you wanted a microphone, you're gonna have to get a separate microphone. Rush FPV creates special microphones or really great quality microphones for this. So you'd be able to pair this up with one of those if you wanted to. Now, and again, we wanna concentrate down here. So this thing takes battery voltage. So it'll take anything above six volts. So if you have a flight controller that has some sort of a 12 volt regulator or a nine volt regulator, I would rather you use that than the battery voltage. So for example, our flight controller has a nine volt regulator for the DJI air unit stuff maybe or something then you'd want to take the 9 volt pad then you're going to want to grab one of these red wires and solder it to the 9 volt pad on your flight controller and take it to the bat pad right here and that would give it its 9 volts however if your flight controller does not have any sort of voltage regulator then you're going to want to take the red wire here straight from where your battery is connected on the esc and bring that up right there or whatever pad that says v bat you're gonna to wanna to take that up and plug it in right there on the bat. Ground is usually the black wire. Find any ground pad you can connect it here, you'll be totally fine. Five volt and ground. Now don't mistake this for an input. So this is an output. So don't take five volts from your flight control and connect it right here. That's not how this works. This is a five volt output for your camera. If you're gonna be powering anything off of this one, it has a five volt regulator built in. But usually in most cases, the five volt from the flight controller is sufficient enough and you barely have to do this. Unless you're using some kind of a FPV wing where you're not using a flight controller, then you'd use this to power up your camera here. So we have five volt in ground right there to power up a camera. So the vid here is gonna be the yellow wire. So you can grab your yellow wire and you're gonna to wanna to connect it to your flight controller on the VTX pad or V out. They have a bunch of different names, but make sure it's one of the output pads. So V out is usually a common one. Also VTX is also another one, which is common. RX here is very important. RX is gonna to connect to any TX pad on your flight controller that is open and you would enable smart audio. For example, if we took this RX, connected it on a flight controller's TX2 pad, then in beta flights config or ports tab, you wanna find UR2. So whatever TX number you use, so for example, again, we said TX2, then you're gonna wanna find UR2 in the configuration and enable smart audio. And that'll allow you to control this guy 
through the on-screen display without having to come here and pressing these buttons in order to change channels, which is something really nice here. Now the board feels very, very light. Unfortunately, I cannot measure this right now because of me recording this. We have that human malware problem and my assistant took the measuring stuff home. So I'm not able to measure that right now, but it feels fairly light, like really light if that helps anybody out there. Unfortunately, I can't give you a real number. So I do apologize for that. Now another thing they've added, which I really like, and they really did not have to, for example, if you're going to be using this on an FPV wing, they even give you a connector straight for your camera. So you'll be able to connect any camera direct into this. So you'll be able to put these three right there and just go ahead and connect it to your camera and just start flying so this is a really nice uh, touch here and they also give you the wires needed everything is silicone and they're already stripped and pre-soldered so that's also a nice little addition that they've done here and uh, i really love the mmcx uh, right angle this is the kind of things we need especially in our quadcopters because the straight ones take too much space as you can tell it's really nice it just follows along the profile of the video transmitter and most of your layout and you'll be able to move this around to where you need and again they provide you with two here and well that's it guys i really hope you guys enjoyed the video make sure you check the links down below these are on sale for 11 bucks or 10 10 something so that's pretty crazy i just wanted to go check it just to double check the specs here and i found it on sale so hurry up for it's gone and either way it's still on a good price 20 bucks is still a pretty damn good price even if it's not on sale and i really hope you guys enjoyed the video i'll see you in the next one guys peace out